Sean McKeel, pro golfer from Germantown, Tennessee, real good friend of ours, and he's going to tell us about a foundation that he supports that, and we do too, that is real good for our children. Sean? Uh, well, you know, uh, back in um, 2003, um, I had the opportunity to, um, I had just won the PGA Championship, and um, actually John Daly was the, one of the first uh, local area golfers to really have a, a big part in, um, in Make-A-Wish of, of Memphis. And um, John went on to start his own uh, Lion's Heart Foundation, which left the door wide open for me. I happened to live near the director of, of Make-A-Wish for Memphis, um, uh, you know, Patricia Brown. And uh, she asked me if I wanted to, to have some do some work or, or be part of the event or host the event. And, and, and I kind of agreed to all three. Um, you know, I love kids. I'm a, I'm a father now. I've got a six-year-old boy and a, and a, a two-year-old girl. So, um, you know, I think kids in general have a pretty special place in my heart. But um, we do a lot of, um, I think we've granted, we've raised about $1.3 million in the six years that I've had my event. Uh, so when you factor in about $5,000 per wish for every child, um, you know, you can do the math. And that's, uh, you know, some pretty significant happiness as I like to call it on those kids faces uh, it's a uh, I love it uh, you know when you when you go there and you uh, it's one thing just to raise money but it's it's a wholly different uh, thing when you when you raise the money and then you actually get to participate in giving the wish meeting the children meeting the parents um, it just uh, it, it's it's pretty incredible well that's a that's a very worthwhile charity that you support and uh, you know I've known Sean for quite a while now, and I'll tell you this much about him. He's a big-hearted man. <laughs> he, uh, he's right when he said he loves kids. He does, and I believe he's a good father, and I think he uh, appreciates the situation that sometimes people get in that we have no control over. And to be able to help, that means a lot to the families. It, well, I've, I've certainly found that... Uh you know, it's one thing to see the, 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 the smiles on the kids' faces, but, you know, but I think the parents ultimately know uh, what their, their children are in for. Um, you know, look, Make-A-Wish is an organization that affects children with life-threatening illnesses, uh, not, just, not just illnesses of, you know, colds. And, and, and I mean, these are significant illnesses that these children are facing, most of which, um, in most of the children, I think, that come through Make-A-Wish, you know, I think at some point their disease ultimately uh, catches up to them, and uh, there have been a lot of great strides with uh, medicines and techniques and surgeries and St. Jude Hospital in Memphis. And again, that's a perfect fit for me. Being with the PJ Tour and the PJ Tour being part of uh, having such a, a huge role in, in uh, donating money to charity. I think last two years ago they reached the billion dollar mark for donations to charities. And of course, I'm biased, but St. Jude, in my in my opinion, is probably the premier. Uh, you know, charity, um, you know, in the in the country, and there's a lot of great ones too. But but uh, living in Memphis and growing up around the kids, it uh, it was just a natural fit, I think, for me. Well, that's good. That's a great thing to do. Not only is he a, is Sean a pro golfer and involved in all the community things such as Make a Wish and things like that, but he's a duck hunter too. Tell us about the pintails you kill, y'all killed this year. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, obviously around here in uh, Arkansas where we are, uh, the first season wasn't very good. It was still, you know, kind of unusually warm and the ducks hadn't made the push south yet. But uh, I think we took advantage of getting out and, and um, you know, uh, camo in the pits and, and uh, just kind of scouting out kind of what we wanted to do for some improvements and, and everything. But, uh, you know, we just, uh, the second season started on the 10th of December, and I think right around the 10th or 11th, we had uh, one morning, uh, one of my buddies, Stephen, uh, killed a uh, banded pintail. Uh, the next morning, uh, another one of our friends, uh, David Hudson, uh, killed another banded pintail. Um, I still have not heard where David's was uh, banded, but Stephen's was banded in 2002, so seven years ago in South Dakota. So that's uh, pretty unusual. I almost felt bad, really. Um, Stephen felt kind of bad for really that, that duck had made it that long, but... Uh, uh, just a beautiful bird. I mean, of, of all the ducks out here, there's, there's, uh, we've killed a lot of blue wing teal, um, even, even as of late. Beautiful. Um, you know, uh, we just, we just enjoy being out here, and, and uh, you know, I'm grateful to have, to have met you and seen your ad in, in the commercial appeal back in Memphis because I was 
hunting with another group of guys and, and I kind of wanted to have my own place and, and um, so I kind of found my way over here just to Clarendon, Brinkley, Arkansas area to, to do some hunting and it's a, it's a good way for me to, you know, unwind and, and be out with my friends and, and not have to think about golf and, and do something I enjoy. Um, you know, I grew up a deer hunter but, but I don't really enjoy the solitary part of that anymore. I enjoy being out with my friends and hey, you can talk for, you know, a few minutes and if a duck's wandering around you think you might call him in well you know you can be quiet for a few minutes but i just just enjoy being out here and uh i'm just really happy that we found your place you got a great cabin and uh facilities have been wonderful um you know not too many ducks around the day but that's not your fault that's just that's why they call it hunting so um again just just happy to be here the other day we got 10 inches of rain in about 48 hours and we've, we've definitely got enough water for the duck this year. If, got, if a duck, duck needs water, he's got it now. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, Stephen's even fallen a few times. I've, I've fallen a few times to work on my, my swimming skills. We figure the Winter Olympics are about three years away, so we're trying to, it's kind of yeah. hard to swim in waders, but uh, we've, we've certainly tried a couple times. My kids have always told me it wasn't a good hunt if I didn't get wet. Yeah, that's exactly, hey, that's part of it. I brought my six-year-old out here last week. Um, First time he'd ever ever been hunting. Of course, you've met him, and and he he shot that yeah. modified 410 um, out here a couple of times. And um, he and I sat out here in the rain last was last Tuesday or Wednesday, and uh, I limited out in about 40 minutes. And uh, he had a big time. And of course, I got soaking wet trying to carry him from the four wheeler to the <laughs> to the uh, to the pit and trying to get the mojo and and everything else. But it was. Uh, it was fun, so that was his first experience. He got to see some ducks fall. Well, he told me, he says, you know what, Dad, I'll call and you shoot. <laughs> so he, <laughs> well, he, now, that, that works. Hey, yeah. how, how much better could it be? Now, that's what yeah. you call camaraderie. I tell you what, I really <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, you know, I remember when my father first took me hunting for the first time, but uh, nothing else like going to Max and and uh, and buying him some, some Drake, you know, clothing and, and hoping that it fits because he wasn't with me. Um, and just taking him out there, and, and there was only one crying episode out there that we had, and, and uh, I quickly calmed him down, and he wasn't afraid of the gun, which was, I think, probably the biggest thing. It was a warm day. It was in the mid-50s. Uh, just had a nice, nice steady rain, which I like to hunt in anyway, um, and of course with the pit, they're, they're camoed great. They've got the nice tops on them, so he didn't get wet at all, and, and uh, it was just, uh, it was an enjoyable morning, even if it was only an hour. Are the shovelers in full plumage have yeah, they got they all their colors they do they do matter of fact i think i got four shovelers a gadwall and a blue wing teal last week with him but uh there were a lot of shovelers early on in the season then we've kind of seen a little bit more migration of, of some mallards and have not seen the uh the pintails um like i have in the years past um you know i remember times where you know the limit is one you know one per man and that's all you're getting are pintails. We stand up to, you know, you try to identify your ducks. Now nope, can't shoot those. Those are pintails. But we're not having that issue this year. We've, like I said, we've killed a lot of blue winged teal, which I think is, is kind of unusual for this late in the season. Um, but, uh, you know, we're yeah. we're not too picky. Well, here it is. Uh, it's not even the first of the year. Yeah, what's the day? The 28th of, yeah. of December. And generally, we see the majority of our pintails on our club. Uh, after about the 10th of January. Well, uh, I think they're yet to come. I believe they're going to be here in the numbers. We just hadn't gotten them. I hadn't. Uh, it's been a long time since I've hunted after the 10th of January. My, my golf season gets going here before too long, and uh, my hunting days are, are dwindling down. I've, I'm going to hunt today and maybe tomorrow morning and then head back to Tennessee and, and uh, maybe hunt one, maybe one more day next week and then mm -hmm. once towards the end of January. But um, so I'm. You know, I'm kind of running out of time. I enjoy the first season. I think uh, it's just always fun to kind of get out there, and the excitement's been building for for ten months. And if you ask any duck hunter, by the time you know duck hunting season ends on the at the end of January, most guys are ready for a week off and then for it to start up again. That's just just the way it is with duck hunting. But uh, you know, we certainly have a great time out here. We've had a uh, an unusual season. It's been a fun season so far. Mm -hmm. We look forward to the rest of it. We wish you well. Thank you. With the Wish Make a Wish Foundation and in your golf uh, tournaments this year, hope you win a dozen. Of me too. Me too. I and like I said, I'm getting started here before too long. I'm, I'm moving on to uh, going to play a couple of events in Europe. I'm going to Qatar and Dubai at the end of January. So 
Uh, I'm excited about the uh, being healthy for the first time in three years. You know, after I had my shoulder surgery, kind of set me back a little bit, but uh, for the first time in three years, I'm healthy. So, I'm, uh, you know, I'm I'm excited about my season, but still looking forward to the the rest of the duck hunts that I get. Good deal. Appreciate the interview. Yeah, I enjoyed it.